I consider this this class and and this material uh, really critical at at, at this moment. Um, I think that the Instituto Lula is a, a an important uh, site of debate, of discussion, of organizing. Uh, the to hold the chair that bears. President Lula's name is, is an incredible honor. He's a historical figure for the left in Brazil, for the left in Latin America, in the world. Uh, and if anybody can articulate a popular uh, response, a, a popular uh, 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 agenda for a new moment of global capitalism, uh, Lula is the person. Uh, there's, there, there's no one else who has the kind of charisma and understanding that, that he has. Uh, and so we need voices from the South, we need popular voices, we need the voices of workers, of peasants, of, of women, indigenous, all who have been excluded uh, in general from the, the last 250 years of global capitalism. And once again, in this new moment of digital capitalism, uh, their voices are, are as important as ever. Um, and so that's what I hope that this class can do. Um, I'll be, I'll be straight, in, 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 to some degree, I invited uh, 10 experts from around the world, from, from Europe, from India, from China, from Australia, from the United States, from Brazil, in part because this subject, this issue of digital capitalism is one that I am uh, just beginning to, 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 to understand. I think we all are, but, but I, I really do feel like um, we, we will benefit with the contribution of of all these, all these other uh, experts. Um, and, and my own work, uh, I'm a professor at the University of Denver uh, in, in Colorado in the United States. I'm a professor in the School of International Studies. My own work is focused on international development. Um, in particular, I've looked at the way in which the way that, the way that states uh, uh, raise money through revenues, through taxes, uh, and, and, and spend it tells us something about the societies, the social systems in which they operate. Um, and so questions of development for me have very much uh, been focused on the nature of citizenship, the nature of the state, the role of, of, of developing countries in an international system, um, in an international capitalist system, and, and to observe how that's, how the, that's shifted over time. Uh, who, who, uh, uh, who contributes, what resources, for what purposes uh, and, and receives what benefits is, is really central to the way in which I uh, uh, approach social science. Um, so uh, this class uh, is, is going to be run over the next 10 weeks. There, uh, uh, be sure to, to note that we're, we're skipping a week for Carnaval, February 26th, and there are two sessions that will be at slightly different times uh, to accommodate uh, people in different time, presenters in different time zones. So do keep an eye on the, on the, the syllabus uh, and on the schedule that you can find in the, in the Google Classroom and, um, uh, and, and you should be able to, to keep everything straight there. Uh, I'm going to try to create dynamics for us to get to know each other, for us to, to uh, articulate our own concepts of what popular sovereignty in a digital age might look like. Zoom is, is clumsy and clunky, as, as you all know, um, and we'll just have to do our best um, uh, to get to know each other and to, and to, to build on what we know. And that, that, that is a part of how I understand teaching in general, and in particular in this class. Um, teaching for me and, and, and classes for me are very much about unlocking the knowledge that already exists in all of us. Uh, and so I think that you are all, are all experts uh, on the way in which you've experienced this transition to a digital age. And my job and our job as a, as a community here is to, to, is to unleash that and to build something out of it. And I, and I say that first because I think that they're, they're, you know, the, the notion of expertise and, 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 uh, and hierarchy in the classroom is, is a silly one, um, but also because I think that in this moment, of transition, of transition in the global system, uh, articulated popular alternative really does require the work and the contribution of all of us. And so to start doing that right here in the classroom, I really do want your voices and your, your understandings of what's going on to be, to be the way that we shape the activities. Um, so 
each Saturday, as, as Luis explained, uh, we will expect that you will have worked through the readings and the video uh, uh, material that, that, is, that is in the Google Classroom for you, hopefully easy enough to find. Um, and that Saturday will be very much a, a discussion. I will, um, uh, there, there will be a, a short space for some presentation. Today I'll, I'll speak, I hope, for something around 15 or 20 minutes um, on, on the material, the, th the highlights or the things that I found most interesting for this week. Uh, and then we'll, we'll uh, uh, engage in some, something like a, a discussion um, when there are other presenters, I will begin by asking them one or a few questions to start off the conversation to draw out what I thought were the most interesting things about the presentations that they have pre-recorded. You'll find that they that they've pre-recorded lectures for you all to uh, to, to view um, and selected readings for you all to, to read. So I'll ask them a few questions about what I found most interesting, and then really I want there to be questions from you all. Um, and to that end, you'll see that there are two assignments for you uh, during, the, during the, the, the seminar. One of them is to submit in writing questions for the presenters. So uh, we'll see how the numbers are, but my guess is that in any given week, there will be uh, uh, five or six people who have decided that they wanna write out two or three questions they can be in Portuguese. I'll translate them for our presenters in the event that they don't speak Portuguese. Uh, you can write two or three questions out uh, for the presenters and you'll ask those questions in the classroom and, and that'll be part of the, the dynamic. Other people who haven't written out questions, of course, can ask them, but I thought this was a useful way just to, to, to really uh, uh, lock people into some level of, of participation. The other assignment, um, as you know, is to reflect on uh, uh, the week's readings and, and presentations. And so at some point during the 10 weeks, you will pick a week in which you write a one page. And I, I, I give one page and, and 250 words or so double spaced as a guideline. If you go over the amount, I will still read it. If you're under the amount, you will not be penalized, but that's just a, 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 a guide to, to what, we think is it, what I think is, is reasonable just to, to, to give a short reflection. Um, and this is just another way to lock people into a certain amount of participation. Those who submit their reflections before a week's class uh, will, depending on the numbers, once again, be invited to say a few words about their reflection, what they found most interesting, what they'd like to hear more about. Um, and so hopefully that can also be a way to, to generate a dynamic. Um, for today, I'm going to, to share my screen now, um, just so you have an idea of the flow of, of today's uh, class. And uh, that can be shared. And I think I can get this into, uh, into full screen here. Give me one second. Okay. Okay, um, so uh, just so you know, this, so this is obviously the title of the course. I put my email here, and, and this, this uh, um, uh, PowerPoint will be on Google Classroom also for you to, to work through if, if, if you like afterwards. Um, just for today, the, uh, after this short introduction, I wanted to talk a little bit about the concept of value, the data value about labor, uh, we saw the video on techno feudalism. I really like that Varoufakis uh, video. Uh, I'll ask uh, for people to, to indicate, um, uh, you know, uh, if, if you were able to, to see that and perhaps respond to that that particular video. Um, and we'll we'll see how time goes. I want I don't want to uh, occupy all of the class with my own uh, presentation, but I had also thought about uh, some some discussion of the role of state and citizenship in, in this particular moment. And then I have a short dynamic uh, uh, breakout. And the idea would be to separate everybody into groups of say five, allow you to introduce yourselves to your colleagues um, and, uh, uh, and, and have an exchange. And then we'll bring back the breakout groups to the, the plenary and, um, 
and hear what, what people discussed based on the activity, the, the questions that I've uh, uh, suggested for the breakout groups. Um, so, and actually, you know, now that I, that I think about it, um, because we're recording, I believe the chat will remain recorded. Uh, and and, and that, that's convenient because um, it, perhaps everybody now or in the, in the next uh, uh, moment or so could introduce themselves in the chat. And at least there, I will have a little bit more uh, uh, connection with, with each of you. Um, our numbers probably don't allow us to let everybody um, uh, take a minute or two to present themselves. We'd end up with the whole time on presentations. But in the chat, perhaps you know, introduce yourself uh, where you're you're from and and uh, uh, the most uh, uh, or the re the reason that you you wanted to take take this course um, it can be the question that you want, most want answered or the issue that you find most pressing um, so name where you're from and 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 most important issue or, or question and that can be in the chat and at the very least I'll have a chance to to, to view that view that there. Um, so the, the first thing that I wanted to, to, to start with was uh, the concept of, of, of the data value chain. Um, and let's see, where is it? The last slide. there we go. Um, you'll, you'll remember this from the, the video presentation that, that, uh, is, in, that is in classroom. Um, I really like, this is from an UNCTAD uh, 2019 digital digital report or uh, uh, UNCTAD annual report um, of, of digital capitalism. Um, and what it shows, I think very nicely, is that there's sort of a, a cycle, um, a, a circuit on as far as data value, data create value, the transformation of data into a commodity. Uh, data has to be collected, stored, analyzed, transformed into something that's categorizable and, 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 uh, and, and quantifiable and, commodif and commodified, turned into something that can be sold in these various ways, targeted online advertising uh, for e-commerce platforms, uh, turning regular uh, 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 commodities into, um, into services, and, and then the, the infrastructure itself of uh, this this uh, value value circuit, uh, cloud services uh, services uh, storage as a service. Um, so this this circuit does bring into 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 uh, consideration you know what we understood as under industrial capitalism the circuit of capital and you, we all are familiar or, or perhaps we're familiar with the the circuit that Marx described of money being invested into the production process, turned into a, a commodity, and that commodity sold for more money. That circuit of capital uh, um, in which the, the, the transformation of, uh, uh, of, of capital into a commodity through the, the application of labor was the source of surplus. Um, well, that circuit, oh, this is hard to read, isn't it? Um, well, we'll it, here, here we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll leave it uh, for now. Uh, maybe I'll fix it in the future. But that circuit is somewhat different now. Uh, we do we still have a role for labor, uh, but now data is the raw material. Informa data as information it, because it, it contains information. Data is is the raw material that is transformed, and so we do have to reconsider in some ways the role for labor. Um, some of the information uh, will we'll mute everyone, and to, and, uh, uh, but you will have the, the ability to unmute yourself. Uh, but please do keep your, your, your mic muted, obviously. Um, so some of the way in which labor is related to information is that uh, 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 you know, much of the data that is collected is produced by us in our daily lives. Um, and so you, you will we'll have a chance to discuss it, but you saw that we know what you did during lockdown video. I really like that, that video and it sort of uh, shows how we're under constant surveillance. There is data being collected about us through cameras, through our smartwatch, through our clicks on Facebook, uh, uh, through our searches in Google, through our, our, our cell phones and, and tracking where we are. So 
just in our daily lives, it's ubiquitous and inescapable. You can't really opt out. Uh, uh, that, that notion that, that we have you know, the ability to, to opt out and, and, and there are privacy agreements, Europe has tried to create some, some mechanisms of, of uh, regulation that allow you to reserve areas of your life for privacy. California has said, well, there are things you could do to, 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 to have your own control over the data that you're, that you're generating. But really, it's, it's almost impossible. The fine print on all of those, those uh, forms that we, we consent to when we, we opt into different websites, uh, it's impossible for anyone to, 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 to manage that. So there's this ubiqu ubiquitous collection of, of data as information from us that, uh, uh, that we make through our living, through our, through our lives. And that's one aspect of it. And then there's the, the, the labor that goes into the value chain. And that goes from the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the children mining cobalt in the Republic of Congo uh, and, and the exploitation that occurs there to bring out the minerals that are essential to, to this, this, uh, this digital, digital age, uh, to the, the, the high-tech workers who are writing the code and the algorithm um, uh, to the, the, that, that, that turn data in, into information that can be commodified, to the, uh, the warehouse workers that in Amazon that are moving things around, um, to the Uber driver and, and, and Amazon delivery person who is, who's, who's delivering uh, um, uh, the, the, the commodity. And so you know, labor has a role within the value chain, but also simply producing producing uh, uh, data. Uh, and so this source of, 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 of information and the, and the surplus that comes out of it, um, surplus has to be understood in a, in a, in a new way. Uh, the, the value of the data above the cost of labor to commodify it, to produce it and to turn it into commodity. Well, we've got low wages in the, in the sector to produce the hardware, the minerals, to deliver the goods. And we have no wages in some of the, the, the ways in which uh, data is produced. And so the surplus, the absolute surplus and the relative surplus is extraordinary. And this is why we see this incredible inequality uh, that, that, uh, that we know is, is occurring right now. But so data as raw material that is appropriated uh, 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 from labor in these various ways is defines sort of the, 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 the production of surplus in this, in this moment. And I think that's really key. Um, and it really gets to this, this video that, that Varoufakis offered on techno-feudalism. And his argument is that capitalism has evolved out of itself into something worse, not into socialism as many on the left would have uh, 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 argued for and, and have been working for, but in fact, techno-feudalism replacing profit, if what defined capitalism was profit and wage labor, we've replaced profit with central bank stimulus. Since 2008, since the crisis of 2008, which was a crisis of neoliberal capitalism, since that moment, central banks have been pumping money, liquidity into the international economy, and this has been scooped up and absorbed by the gigantic, the big five, the large uh, uh, technology companies that dominate in their sectors. Um, and the wage labor uh, relationship as a mechanism of extraction, well, I think he exaggerated. As I've said, it still exists. The miners in, in Republic of Congo, the tech workers in Silicon Valley, the warehouse workers for Amazon, there is still labor in this value chain, uh, in this data value chain, in the form, in, there's still wage labor in, in, that, in, that, uh, in that value chain. But Neoliberalism and, uh, and, and, and automation have really undermined the ability of labor to uh, uh, negotiate to, to, for, for a, a, a fair, uh, even close to a fair share of this, of the value of their, of their work. Uh, and you do have this appropriation of data in the feudal sense of, uh, of, of data that is appropriate without our ever consenting to it or without a value that returns to us in any way like a wage. So there is this, this, this dynamic, uh, Varoufakis has, you know, has described this as techno-feudalism, 
and it, it, it is sort of an exaggeration of capitalism um, uh, since 2000 and, and 2008, 2009. Um, I think I wanted to say, uh, um, no, I'll, we'll go, we'll go, I'll go to the, 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 the state, just to, to observe that um, there is this transition that, um, that I think, you know, uh, uh, Moscow, the Moscow reading describes it very well, Yasimoglu reading describes it very well, the notion that under industrial capitalism, there was a state building process that was relatively complete in the global north, relatively incomplete in the global south, but there was a understanding of what the, what the state was meant to do under industrial capitalism, which was establish a national market, manage international relations to accelerate capital accumulation and pursue hegemony uh, legitimacy domestically. Um, in the global north, that infrastructure, uh, uh, those markets, those international relations were uh, 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 implemented, were, were imposed, were constructed to a fairly complete degree. Dominant classes had a degree of hegemony through the state that allowed them to use the state to, uh, uh, to, to advance accumulation. Um, over time, and this is Asimoglu's argument, and I think that he's a little more uh, 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 rose-tinted in his view of what happened in the post-World War II period, labor forced the state to regulate capital to some degree, um, uh, to, to ameliorate inequality through labor, through, through workplace regulations, allowing unions, um, through the welfare state. Um, so there was this, this combination of a bourgeois state that advanced the interests of dominant classes that uh, ameliorated the worst excesses and, and established some degree of legitimacy and hegemony in the global south one has to observe that this was, a, this was an incomplete process. Uh, states were weak in terms of their ability to promote accumulation, to promote development. Labor was hyper-exploited. Um, and, and, and this was you know, a characteristic of the Global South. Um, there, there was a, a, a very, narrow, very narrow room for labor to regulate capital or to, to, to demand that the state would regulate capital. Um, but the neoliberal period, neoliberal globalization undermined many of these relationships, especially the countervailing power of labor. Um, and so what we see under, under uh, digital capitalism is that the state is once again central in creating this marketplace or uh, this mechanism, this, this, this uh, uh, data value chain. Uh, in providing the infrastructure, and, and Moscow does a nice job, and so does Zuboff, does a nice job of describing how the state, through DARPA, the, the research arm of the, the military, through the National Science Foundation in the U.S., and through the military contracts, the guaranteed uh, uh, um, uh, um, purchases and, and protectionism of the U.S. military, really created the infrastructure for this digital uh, age, allowing these big five companies to, to capture uh, a monopoly or oligopoly power within, these, within this, data, this data chain. Um, and you have super profits that the state inflates by pumping liquidity into the system after 2008, 2009. Um, what's, what's also true about the state is that under this period, the state has largely opted not to regulate capital, allowing these oligopolies and not breaking them up, allowing them to operate in a way that, that they escape taxes. I think Amazon paid something like one, one and a half percent of their revenue in tax in 2019. I mean, just, I pay 33, you know, I pay a third of my income in tax. That's just the normal way that, 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 that uh, people, uh, labor is taxed in, in the US. Um, Amazon paid one and a half percent in, in that particular year. So they have ways of evading taxes and states have not sought to crack down on that. They've not regulated speech on the internet in a way that would um, require, you know, the kinds of things that we require of the, of the normal press, which is a, a, uh, a reflection and a, and a fairness doctrine that you can't just presume, produce, uh, present one, one side, you can't pre present lies. Um, and allowing 
as we've said, capital to appropriate data um, from, from constant surveillance and ubiquitous uh, uh, intrusion into our, into our lives. And instead of a state that is based on some degree of hegemony, we're moving into the direction of a state that's based on coercion. Um, and so the surveillance, the constant surveillance of the military information complex, as opposed to the military industrial complex, the military information complex is producing a, you know, unlimited store of data as information for capital to appropriate. And then the state is in, it, you know, operates to enforce um, the, the, and to, to restrain the social um, uh, discontent that comes out of the inequalities that, that, are, that, are, that are produced. Um, and so, and I do wanna, wanna, wanna elaborate a little bit about what this means for, for citizenship. Um, and so we've said that uh, capital and the state working together, oftentimes working together, surveil us constantly and attempt to modify our behavior. And Zuboff has really elaborated on uh, behavior as the, the, the raw material. Um, I, I, I think that, that uh, one could say all data is, is the raw material, uh, but she's very much interested in the way in which behavior is what is being captured by, by this new digital capitalism. Um, and because behavior is the thing being captured, capital has an interest in modifying our behavior and making it more legible, legible, uh, uh, easily, easy to quantify, to categorize, to capture and make equivalent the way in which I click on one website and you click on one website have to be equivalent for their measurements. Um, and so they make them equivalent. Uh, and then they nudge us in directions that uh, make it even easier for them to continue uh, pr producing and appropriate, appropriating data. Um, the state has a, a, a parallel interest in modifying our behavior, making us uh, 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 obedient and and and, uh, and and compliant with this this uh, uh, this this system, this appropriation, this inequality, um, and this the, the video the the we know what you, did, what you did during lockdown. I really like that that video also, um, uh, in which and I don't know how many people were able to to, to view it, but uh, in in the video, a woman is being interrogated by a. Uh, representative of a company that's been hired to surveil people and make sure that they obey the COVID lockdown. But the way in which they surveil them, you know, uh, uh, is evident. They have access to the cameras on the street, to the temperature gauge in her apartment, to her smartwatch, to everything. So they have, you know, uh, constant surveillance possible, and they take all of the indicators, the data from these these, this internet of things that, that exists and they crunch it and they produce conclusions. An algorithm produces conclusions about why or, 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 or you know, whether she is obeying the dictates of the COVID lockdown. Um, and her response is you know, to constantly say, wait, you can't just take my data without my asking. Uh, you can't presume that my data tells you this thing when you don't really know me. Uh, uh, you're removing my ability to express myself as a human being, to have relationships with other human beings that aren't mediated through my smartwatch or, or, or through Facebook or for, you know, through these platforms. Um, and I think that it really does bring up these questions of, you know, how do we uh, uh, assert the rights of the liberal individual uh, to express themselves, to have an identity? Uh, if, if one of the characteristics of the modern age was the notion of the individual. And Zuboff is very much interested in this, this idea of citizenship. Um, the liberal individual that can sort of decide, am I in any setting? Am I North American? Am I a resident of Denver? Am I a man? Am I heterosexual? Am, no, whatever the characteristics that I have within my identity, they are all available for me. And I bring them together in different ways at different moments uh, uh, to express myself in the situation as I wish. And that freedom to express oneself and to draw on all of our identities is something that um, is something that liberal 
uh, 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 democracy depends on and the modern age was sort of defined by. And yet here we are constraining our, our behavior and turning our identities into things that can be quantified, uh, categorized, measured, turned into a commodity to be packaged and sold for targeted advertising, and also constraint. And Zuboff is very much worried about, about the constraint on our identities that, that, that occurs in this way. Um, and you know, I do want to elaborate a little bit because I think that Zuboff doesn't, I mean, she's got the book, as you saw, and we've got the whole thing on, on, on PDF. The book is, is 700 pages long. And so it's not that she doesn't address it at all, but uh, for uh, many liberals, those who are, are, are arguing as she does in sort of a liberal human rights uh, way, the liberal individual is the, the key unit of society. And I would argue that class, community, these are other units, genders, uh, um, ethnicities, uh, these other units are uh, also relevant in, in to, to modernity. And so it's the relationships that we form with other members of our class, uh, uh, with, with um, uh, others that we, we, we consider part of our, our, our group that are part, that are important units within society. And in fact, one might argue that the environment, a relationship with the environment is a a unit or a, 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 a thing that we have to understand as part of the way in which we make ourselves uh, uh, complete as humans. Um, so Native Americans talk about the environment as a relation. Uh, your, your mother, your son, your, your, your cousin, you're in a relationship with them. And in the same way, nature is a, a relation of ours. Mother Earth, people talk about. Um, and so this notion that we have a relationship with the earth and with, with, with the environment is one that is part of the way in which we, we operate. All of this is broken down into commodified relationships uh, through this, this digital mechanism. And, and that uh, it, it strips us of our ability to, to express ourselves as individuals and as members of, of, of communities.